Whatever I do, whether it sells or not, at least I mean it at the time and I'm honest about it. Which I think is the only way to be. I think that a lot of people are going so wrong by analyzing music too much and learning from a totally different perspective from the way I learned. I mean, I just learned by listening to people. People I learned from learned by listening to people. I think a good guitar solo sounds so much better within the context of a good song. I mean, if you go to a rock gig and someone plays a ballad, it can still really come across, even though there's a hundred thousand people there. Whenever I was in the dressing room on my own, I'd start playing blues to myself. One night, Bob Daisley, the bass player, came in and said, you know, Gary, you should make a blues album next. It might be the biggest thing you ever did. I laughed. He laughed, too. But I did, and he was right, and it was. When you get into the habit of leaving a space, you become a much better player for it. If you've got an expressive style and can express your emotions through your guitar, and you've got a great tone, it creates a lot of tension for the audience. It's all down to the feel thing. The blues needs to be everything to you. Otherwise, it's not going to come across. That's what I think. I didn't want to end up in Hollywood having facelifts and my hair dyed blonde so I could appear on my own album cover. I sang a song called Sugar Time. That was it. I had the bug. The idea of being 45 years old and wearing spandex just doesn't happen for me, you know? Obviously, I don't play the same way as Peter, but I could do a passable imitation of Peter Green. If you gave me a guitar, I could sit here and probably get closer than anybody else. I always think it would be great to play clubs again, and then when I do I don't like it because I just feel sometimes it's a bit too intimate. The first time I saw Peter Green play was at the Club Rotto, which was a very rough club in Belfast, and at that time he just replaced Eric in the Blues Breakers. I'd gone up there to sort of hang out and see if I could meet this guy Peter Green, because I'd read about him and everything. These guitar institutes and things like that, I think they take away people's identity, and they're actually encouraging a lot of people to play who are not naturally good players anyway, but they're telling people that anyone can learn to play. We're losing the whole point. Music is not to impress people. Music has to stand up on its own and guitar solos are nothing to do with it. I came in touch with music at an early age. My father was a show band promoter who took me along as a little nipper of five and put me up on the stage with the musicians to sing. I found reading musical notation frightfully boring. I usually don't go into record stores to buy folk music. At some point the label Hard Rocker began to get on my nerves, and I decided to break those chains. 
My music definitely doesn't sound like ACDC or the Scorpions, nothing against either of these bands, they're okay. But I was fed up with that image. Like a lot of the newer bands, like the more poppy kind of bands, although they make really good records and they produce them really great and everything, they don't really deliver on stage. And I think that's where like the heavier bands kind of score. I always loved the Yardbirds when I was a kid, you know? I was always into Jeff Beck and everything. I'm not one of those people who get emotional. When I'm playing, I get completely lost in it, and I'm not even aware of what I'm doing with my face, I'm just playing. I don't like concert halls where everyone is sitting down and it's all very formal. I don't want to play like that anymore. Whittle, 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 up and down the neck as fast as possible. A lot of guitar players, in every genre, are afraid to leave space. They're afraid to leave a hole, afraid they'll fall down it or something. My father was responsible for me starting in music. He's always stood behind me. When we came to America before, we opened shows in arenas for groups like Rush. It's always been a case of playing for 45 minutes for someone else's audience. Songs that are just a vehicle for a guitar solo are very empty just an excuse for a guitarist to show what scales he practiced last month. I think all my albums have concentrated on songs. I've never taken the typical Van Halen route to try and become a guitar hero. If you take a long time over a record, you end up making something different from what you intended. Most musicians make the same record every time, and that's fine. But the people I respected when I was growing up, like Jeff Beck, they weren't afraid to try something new. I did play with Dr. Strangely Strange a couple of years ago, that difficult third album, Alternative Medicine, 1997. It was great to see them all. They're very special people, and they were very good to me in Dublin in the 1960s. I remember seeing the Who at the top hat. I've been listening to a lot of dance, hip hop, drum and bass, reggae, R&B, very rhythmical music. I wasn't really worrying too much about what anybody thought, if you do that you shut yourself down. When I was about 14, I went to see Cream play. I thought they were the best band in the world. As time has gone on, I felt less and less need to play too many notes. That's something you do when you're younger. You play far too much and too fast. Irish music makes you want to get up and jump around. Heavy metal to me is this cartoon idiom where people have their hair stuck up all over the place dyed blonde with black roots showing through and spandex trousers and chains around their neck, eating raw meat on stage. It just doesn't mean anything to me. Most of the bands that come out of L.A. now have singers that all sound like Daffy Duck. I've always thought of music in the long term. 
I've always tried to write songs that people could listen to a couple of years later, and maybe longer. I didn't actually start to play till I was about 10. My father came home from work a Friday and he said, Would you like to learn to play the guitar? I said, Yeah. I'd love to try. But I didn't think for one moment that I'd be able to do it. I learned fairly quickly that that was what I wanted to be a guitarist because it was the first thing I ever done in my life that really felt like it was something that I belonged to. I don't know. From the moment I picked it up, it felt right. I drove my mom crazy because I wouldn't go out and play football or join the Boy Scouts. I'd just sit at home and play the guitar. There was a great blues scene in Belfast during the late 60s. I'm not as a studied, technically, as you might think. My technique has really evolved naturally over the years from watching other guitarists and trying to develop my own style. The rhythmic feel of Dark Days in Paradise is completely different to anything I've ever done before. There's a lot of drum loops on there, but used in conjunction with real drums, a lot of influence from hip-hop and dance music with the keyboard sound and sequencing. I really want to concentrate on the blues again and do it properly, which is something I feel I didn't do before.